So uh, quickly introducing uh, Kalpesh, uh, sir. Kalpesh, sir, can I request you to switch on your camera? Uh, can I hear? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Kalpesh, bhai, can I can I request you to switch on your camera? Yeah, I'm on already. I on my okay, perfect, perfect. So I, as I said, I am extremely privileged to be welcoming Kalpesh Bhai today to this wonderful talk. Uh, thank you so much, Kalpesh Bhai, for accepting my invite and taking out time to be here. I know uh, your time is pretty precious and you have been kind enough to accept our invite and to come here to talk to our students and the aspiring financial planners. Uh, so just to introduce Kalpesh Bhai, Kalpesh sir is uh, a certified financial planner and a CBI RIA. He is the founder CEO of Full Circle uh, Financial Planners, so that's his own firm. And when I say that's his own firm, so there he had established, uh, he had the transition of the, uh, the, the wonderful journey from being an MFD to becoming one of India's best known financial planners today. And not only India, he has... <clears throat> extremely good exemplary kind of client base in Middle East as well. So that's what Kalpesh sir has done in, in less than 10 years. And is, today he is one of the poster faces for the financial planning industry and the investment advisory industry. Uh, he is uh, somebody who is uh, very pre frequently coming on, appearing on media, on uh, TV channels, so on. Uh, he writes uh, uh, content for uh, uh, various digital media as well. So that way he is widely known uh, by the clients as well, not only the financial planning fraternity. Uh, and one thing that I truly uh, love talking about Kalpesh Bhai is uh, his book, Yards Financially. I don't know how many of you have read it, uh, but if you read it or if you recommend your client to read it, trust me, you will be awestruck with the kind of uh, presentation that Kalpesh Bhai has in that. So he has made finance absolutely simple, even the most difficult of the, I mean, his, his style of narrating the story, his whole delivery, that looks great. Uh, he uses Bollywood, he uses stories. He makes things pretty simple, pretty simple. That's what he is going to do. Uh, uh, even a concept like behavioral finance, uh, Kalpesh Bhai will be making it pretty simple for all of us today. So that's that's about a small, short, sweet introduction about Kalpesh Bhai. And Kalpesh Bhai, once again, thank you so much for being here. Over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rajesh Bhai, for this uh, lovely introduction. And I'm truly humbled, I would say, the, to the least, that, uh, you know, uh, speaking to the fraternity members and aspiring financial planners on a platform like ICOFP, I think uh, the moment Rajesh put this proposal to me and said the name ICOFP, I had to say yes. Because as a matter of fact, uh, I started my aspirational journey of uh, becoming a CFP with ICOFP way back in 2009. So uh, the seeds were sown then when uh, I was uh, also aspiring to be a, a financial planner. And a little bit of a brief about, you know, why this caught my attention, the, the journey of financial planning, you know. Uh, like every one of us, I uh, started my journey as a mutual fund distributor. And believe me, there's no... Uh, pride lost for anything. Even today, calling myself a mutual fund, uh, you know, product expert or a mutual fund fan, I would say, because that is a great job which all of us are doing, and that's a beautiful investment vehicle through which we have seen the journey grow uh, right from a five lakh crore to today, where thirty-four lakh crore the AUM of the mutual fund industry is. So today, even the mutual fund distributors are doing a beautiful job of guiding people in the right direction. But financial planning takes it one level above, you know. And when I say one level above it, it gives a very holistic view. So in 2008-9, you know, uh, when the abolition of the, uh, you know, uh, commission structure was done in the mutual fund uh, industry, uh, many of you all must be there, many of you all must not be there. But I decided that if the clients have a level of trust in you, if they have faith in you, then why not take the advice from mutual fund to holistic advice. And what better field than, uh, you know, uh, having a holistic advice about your entire financial life, not only mutual funds. So when you say that you are advising on a holistic basis, your client or your investor 
most of the times, I'm talking eight out of 10 times, would like to then tell you his entire story. And once he tells you his entire story, you are in greater control of guiding and advising him on a holistic way. Your complete scope extends beyond mutual funds. So that is what caught my attention. And uh, once I started my journey with ICFP, it was very inspirational. I used to do it with Dadar in Mumbai uh, when it was there earlier. But one thing I learned from another uh, you know, uh, individual who I would uh, say is my guru, he told me, and I would like to uh, you know, tell this to all aspirational financial planners in the very beginning. He told me that you are already doing good in mutual funds. Now you decided to become a financial planner. Okay. Do one thing. Understand financial planning. Do the exams, the five course uh, module and everything. Pass out the CFP. Get into the practice mode. Try your journey. But one thing I can guarantee you. That's what he told me and that has stuck to me for life that after understanding and implementing financial planning for yourself, you will not do anything wrong for your own individual profile in your own life. So whether you will pursue and become a successful financial planner, it's all up to you and your destiny and the you know, outer conditions. But in whatever profession you are, whatever you do ethically, you will not flounder in making wrong investment decisions for your own financial profile. And that is what stuck me that this holistic thing tells you to differentiate between the right and wrong. And that is what financial planning is. It shows you a journey. And if you feel that you have the, you know, uh, dumb or the josh to take it to others, then please financial planning is the best field to be in. Only thing you require two things. One is good communication skills, good mindset, and a passion. Passion is underlying. So you require that mindset and that communication skills to take it forward. So I think that is the brief which I've said. And I started my journey from 2009, 10, and it's been a decade. And by God's grace, many other factors, many people played their role uh, in my life. And I think the biggest learning has been two people, the markets and the clients. I think there has been no person who teaches you anything in life. So the markets and your clients. The stories which the clients tell and the behavior which the market shows, I think that is the biggest takeaway you all can have. You learn by experience. Okay. So, uh, Rajesh, are we good enough to start now? Yes, Kalpit Bhai. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, now, probably uh, I, I should be sharing my screen, right? Now? Yeah. Okay. So, friends, I had begin my uh, presentation here and I hope uh, I'm clear. Rajesh, if you could just take an affirmation on the chat screen, my voice and my uh, screen. Yeah, yeah, you are, your screen it's is clear. Okay, fair enough. So friends, uh, today the topic I have chosen, I think that forms uh, the crux of uh, financial planning and uh, uh, every financial professional I think uh, should imbibe in it for sure. And this is a soft skill. This is not a technical subject which I'm talking about. But believe me, friends, uh, we can keep communication as a topic uh, sometime else uh, uh, to share with you. But behavioral finance is the topic which is going to be discussed today. And nothing more important for a financial planner than to understand behavioral finance. And believe me, it's not too technical. It's what I and you as individuals are. Today, we are on this side of the fence where we are uh, talking as financial planners for our prospective clients. Once we go home or once we are in the normal day-to-day -day regime, we are on the other side of the fence where people are you know, trying to do things with our behavior and we are reacting accordingly. So it's not that you are a financial planner 24-7. So the mistakes which today your clients are making, believe me, in day-to-day -day life, you are also making as a normal uh, you know, client to somebody or as a normal uh, individual in your day-to-day -day life as well. So behavioral finance is not only applicable to you know, uh, a professional, but to your personal life as well. So welcome, friends. And uh, I hope you all like this presentation and you have some takeaways from uh, this particular presentation. 
So what is behavioral finance? Let's just understand first the definition of uh, behavioral finance. Behavioral finance is actually the application of uh, you know, psychology to finance because what you think is what you act. What you act is what translates into your behavior. And once you apply that onto your financial profile, that is how the entire uh, you know, a pattern starts of you interacting with your clients or clients interacting with you. But here we are going to talk more about uh, your client's behavior, how individuals generally tend to react. And one thing, friends, uh, I would like to tell you here is, please, I'm going to use a word which you might find it repetitive, but there is nothing more important in this entire presentation than this particular word. And that word is mindset. Okay. This entire story is about mindset. Okay. So, uh, that's the behavior of finance is nothing but application of uh, psychology to finance, right? Now, as we move ahead, investors rarely behave according to the assumptions made in traditional finance and economics theory. Book mein kuch likha hai, theory mein kuch likha hai, but investors will do what they want because ultimately investors are individuals, you and me. So investors would like to break the norms as well. Not everybody goes by the textbook, right? And when these rules are broken as per the traditional norms, and it's human nature, we like making rules. Everybody likes to do something different than what is normal. That is human nature. So when we say there is a deviation, this is that deviation that investors rarely behave according to the assumptions made in traditional finance and economic theory. In short, that is behavioral finance, okay? Now, as I said, that mindset, which are these factors which are contributing to this behavioral, uh, you know, finance thing? And I call it the E5 universe, okay? So what is this E5 universe? Because these five aspects will run through my entire presentations and they'll keep popping up somewhere or the other, okay? So you have to be uh, alert on what, uh, what those uh, aspects are, okay? So uh, those five uh, uh, E's, let's start with the first one. Experiences, right? Now, when you say experiences, uh, it is all what we do and experience and what we uh, have an interaction with. All our uh, people around us, be it our uh, clients, be it our regulators, be it our family members, be it our prospective clients, all these experiences gather and make one particular, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, baggage in your mind, the experiences part. Then you have expectations. Again, expectations means that there is something which you expect deviant from what is the normal, uh, I would say, way of things. Okay. So expectations here, like in every aspect of life, uh, if the level of expectations deviates, there is going to be either a happiness or there is going to be agony. So this expectations is that second thing. Evaluation. All of us evaluate. Not only figures, we evaluate uh, you know, people's body language. We evaluate it, uh, uh, a certain uh, visual which we see, we evaluate figures like what uh, everybody would generally uh, have the context of the word with. So evaluation, again, this constant comparison of things. And that comparison also plays a big part in behavior of an individual. Events. How can we forget events? Markets crashing, markets going up. And which was the biggest event which we had, <laughs> we are undergoing, unfortunately, is the pandemic. Now, the pandemic has taught us to, you know, completely revisit all the textbooks which we had. And in fact, it has broken all rules. Here, I'm only pertaining to finance. So who would have thought that when the markets crashed last March or last April and everything looked like doomsday, there's no tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen. Everybody was crashing out. And people who stayed put have already experienced uh, you know, doubling of the market levels, events. Similarly, in the past, 
right from 19, you know, 20, 100 years back almost, there have been financial events which have rocked. There have been good events, there have been bad events. Everything has happened. So that forms a certain space in an investor or an individual's mind to create a certain behavior. Emotions. Everybody of us experience emotions. That again is a very, very integral part. Now, if you see all these five uh, aspects, friends, aren't they related to our day to day life? That is behavior. So, what is so different here? Am I be contradicting myself about financial behavior? Yes, our children to our friends, ke saath hoti hai, family, ke saath hoti hai, wife, ke saath hoti hai, sab ke saath hoti hai. So, this is the mindset, what I said, of an individual on a particular way how he or she behaves. Okay. But the in anything, I would say, above all these is nothing but your ego. And that is the most, you know, uh, I would say the make or break factor for an individual's behavioral aspects. So for ego, the term which I personally look at is when ego is in, everything goes out. You understand? So when you have ego, you don't keep anything with your hand. And when ego comes out, everything comes in. A general rule that be humble. As an advisor, as a planner, or on the other side of the fence, this is the main important thing. And this will show its uh, you know, colors or different uh, you know, uh, layers as we move along this presentation, what I'm talking about ego. Okay, so this is the biggest of them all. This is an integral part of your financial behavior. Your ego, how you react to certain things. Now, there is something about funny about this as well. What determines financial behavior? And how about this? Jai Googleshwar, Google Maharaj ki jai. And because of this Google, there have been DIY Babas, do-it-yourself Babas, who feel that experts are not necessary, advice is not necessary, and I can do it myself. That has caused another complete continent of behavioral finance emotions and actions. You get it, what I'm saying? So Google has been your one-stop shop for everything. So whether you wish to just uh, find anything as the cliche thing goes from pin to elephant, just go on Google and you are the expert. But that is again a big impediment because everything what an expert knows as a financial planner knows, your Google will not have your profile. It will just have answers to what you asked. Okay. And as we move ahead, what are the influencing factors okay, in this behavioral finance? These are all mindset points, my friends, which I'm appraising you all of. Okay? So there's constant comparison. So you will find that if an individual comes to you as a prospective client, okay, you would always be on his judgment list because he would have already asked uh, two other people before you, his, you know, uh, uh, profile, your your quote, how you would be taking forward his thing, your body language, your office, what you are. So there is constant comparison. Second, the comparison parameter is much more larger when people look at their, you know, investment returns. Okay, constant comparison. And they flounder. Believe me, they flounder. They make mistakes. Because the comparison is not peer-to-peer. -peer. It's not comparing apple to apple. They are comparing an apple to an orange. So that is a big, big problem. There is a constant comparison. You are, you or your products or anything is constantly being judged. A set preference. Again, a mindset. Okay. A set preference is nothing but basically a person's mindset or a, a bias, we'll come to that bias word, it's got quite a significance here, 
uh, a set preference is what you like but what you like might not be the best so we have always seen real estate fans we have seen gold investment fans we have seen fixed deposit fans we have seen stock market fans and now latest added to that list is cryptocurrency fans so there is an asset preference that influences a certain behavior brand affinity again this is far far more universal i only like to brush my teeth with colgate now as much as uh, close up is good or patanjali is good i have a brand affinity i only like to wear raymonds brand affinity again a mindset right then uh, spilling that over to mutual funds brand affinity to insurance brand affinity okay real estate as well to some builders but that causes a very you know i would say one sided view i only like investing in xyz amc i only like stocks by a certain particular group so this is again an influencing factor it's a mindset instant gratification oh my god i can't uh, you know uh, stress this point as a practicing financial planner how this either you know affects you or it just uh, you know uh, baffles you i would say you know you are completely ek achamba ho jata hai instant gratification friends is a very important point and for all aspiring financial planners i would like to say this field of financial planning does not give the client instant gratification i might be making a big statement so you understand from which field comes instant gratification so today if you are a broker a client comes to you for investment you suggest him some stock and by your luck that stock rises in whatever period say one day or one month or one year probably the client would feel instant gratification ke main iske paas aaya isne mere ko natija diya aur main aaj uska natije ka aaj main uska fal mujhe mila in financial planning gratification is delayed that is where your you know uh, strength your uh, communication skills your interaction with clients your relation with clients comes because gratification in financial planning comes after a lot of trust building after a lot of exercises have been done his cash flow has been rectified his net worth has been estimated his investments have started most importantly his goals have been identified it time lagta hai so instant gratification is a huge factor in behavioral finance we have to build it in financial planning clients won't get instant gratification a simple example you are more happier the younger generation watching t20 in cricket test cricket is not instant gratification you have to wait for 5 days t20 mein subah natija subah match khela gaya dopahar tak natija finished instant gratification so this is one simple example i am trying to give it give you all trust deficit obviously so whenever we have dealt with anybody so even that would apply to you as well right you would not trust anybody on the face of it immediately either it requires a strong you know referral either it requires some act which you have done or you need to be a big brand or a well known person that a client completely comes and trusts you but in financial planning that does not happen our field is such that we have to grind we have to keep on you know pushing the client to you know have trust in us and that should not be evident it should be done subtly these are some small things which i am telling you of financial planning you cannot make it evident ke bhaiya main sabse acha hu aap mere pe bharosa karo wo nahi hota aapki actions aapka performance dikhayegi aap you have to walk the talk and once you walk the talk what you promised there will be trust building there will not be a trust deficit because every relation with a professional starts with trust deficit you don't trust anybody immediately right probably the same thing happens in an arranged marriage as well right but you have to get on with it so you have to build a certain thing and that is where trust building happens from trust deficit and finally ignorance absolutely we are at that stage right now even after uh, i would say 15 years of financial planning as a profession in india 
we still are, I would say, at the nascent stage. It's now catching up. There's a lot of, you know, work to be done in our field. You all have to take up the momentum. You have to catch it by the thing. There's a huge potential. Because imagine the level of ignorance. I don't want to get into products. We are talking about behavioral finance. But what goes on in insurance? How wrong products are sold to senior citizens in insurance? How bank lockers are, you know, given to senior citizens uh, when they go to open a locker or anybody as for that matter? Coming to mutual funds, people think it's an insurance policy. Real estate, they think it's a perennial, you know, uh, profit-making thing. Ignorance towards many things and the biggest of them, you know, the crypto thing. People do not know even what they are getting into. And they just want to make a fast buck and come out of it. People do not know even where RBI is located. People do not know the full form of SEBI. Who stands for them? Who gives them investor protection? Ignorance is abundant. And that is where we have a lot of scope to increase our profession. I'm not saying that it's a great thing to do, but that's a catch-up factor. You get it? Now, behavioral finance, the topics which we are going to cover here has six mindset biases, the myths and beliefs of finance, behavioral finance, and the adverse effects if things do not fall in place for the investor. Okay, so let's start with the six mindset biases. Now, this is a, a more of a textbook definition, but you all can relate to it. And this is uh, what is written in the books of finance under behavioral finance, but I'm expanding the zone much, much more, more than that because that is what we experience in day-to-day -day life and I'm pretty happy sharing it with all, all of you. Okay, so which are those six mindset biases? Okay, what is a bias first of all? I'm so sticky, bias is what are biases? Okay, so this is a, a pure definition. I have just, uh, you know, uh, copy pasted it. Bias is a disproportionate weight in favor of or against an idea or thing, usually in a way that is close minded and prejudicial. Simple. Agar apne man bana liya, kisi karan vash, aap us ek soch, ek vichar se alag nahi soch sakti. Chahe aapko koi bhi convince kare. It takes a lot of effort to take out a bias from an individual. And many people are either rigid or flexible or have a very mild bias. But it moves in three, three cases. Okay? So it's basically a disproportionate weight. There is no uh, you know, balance in it. If I like A, I like A. That's about it. Why I like A, we'll see. Okay, so which are the six mindset biases? Anchoring. Okay, so a person is so hooked. I would use the word hooked here. Sorry, it's a different, a bit of a slang. But uh, uh, anchoring is when an individual depends too heavily on an initial piece of information offered, and that is anchored. Uske dimag mein ek idea, ek soch, ek vichar ghar kar gaya. Jaise hum bolte hain Hindi. It is imbibed in the client's mind for good. You cannot budge it. It's anchored. Okay. So that is one bias. Ki aaj ko kisi ne ye bol diya, matlab wohi sahi hai. Second, confirmation bias. Now, if a person looks for information that supports his or her beliefs and fails to see the information that presents different ideas, it is a confirmation bias. Which means, aaj agar kisi ne keh diya ki aap ek stock le lo. Aur agar mere dimag mein wo baat bad kai. Then what I'm going to do is my mind is going to be only moving around that particular stock, that particular idea. And I'll go looking around with people with, uh, on Google or uh, on television or read books that what is that data or that uh, knowledge uh, which I have or that point which supports what I've been thinking. So if somebody tells me ABC stock is good, I'll try to only find data about that ABC. So I'll close my eyes about DEF. Okay. So I'm still looking for confirmations. That is confirmation bias. And that puts me in a different thing. You know, uh, uh, what do you uh, I don't look outside. Okay. You get it. 
Then we go on to hindsight bias. Now, this is simple. This we, we encounter in our families also, in cricket also, in sports also. We see that. So hindsight bias is nothing but it refers to the tendency of an individual to believe that he or she would have been able to accurately predict the previous outcome, even if that person was able to do so in real time. Okay, so that hindsight bias, what I'm uh, telling here, is uh, a very you know unique thing because uh, in the hindsight uh, bias uh, category, uh, when we see that uh, people always say, "Dekho, maine bola." See, I was always telling you that, and they never get out of it. But the problematic part is they never say that thing when it's about to happen or before the event. Understand? So hindsight bias, and you would see many people in your friends with your elders. See, I told you that. देखो मैंने बोला था. अरे लेकिन वो time पे क्यों नहीं बोला? So many people have that bias, and it's nothing but again you go back to that slide which I showed you. Hindsight bias is a sure shot case of your ego. They just want a confirmation that they had said something right at that time or thought or something, but they bring it up pretty late. Okay, third mentality bias. Oh my God! This is something which moves up or down the mountains, and any herd mentality is nothing but a euphoria, an excitement, and it is as simple as it is written. कि जो झुंड के साथ चलते हैं वो herd mentality. So herd mentality bias is refers to investors' tendency to follow and copy what others are doing. दिमाग नहीं लगाना. जो सौ लोग कर रहे हैं वो मैं एक सौ एक आदमी आज करूंगा ओके Your herd mentality. कैसे एक आदमी ने पूरी एक nation को साथ में लेके he formed a herd. He led them. Nobody thought where they were getting into, and that you know took the markets up. So that is a clear cut case of herd mentality. Now the fifth mentality bias. It is simple that people don't want to really break their heads. जो सामने दिखता है that is the one which they follow. When people judge the likelihood of an event or frequency by the ease with which examples and instances come easily to mind, वो हम करते हैं. Everybody does that, you know. Who wants to break a record? तो चल रहा है भाई, you know. That is what is going to happen. So my, it's it's quite similar to it's. I would say the primary stage of a herd mentality, the availability bias. You know? So the, that is a more of a, a micro event leading to the herd mentality, which is you know huge. And the sunk cost fallacy. Uh, I like this sunk cost fallacy. You know, it's a little bit hard to read. It's a little difficult. But if you look at the meaning, you will see it's very, very simple. Okay. So this is refers to a tendency for people for irrationally following through an activity that is not meeting their expectations. This is because of the time or money they have already invested. It's the matter. Okay. It is nothing but your mindset. It is nothing but your mindset that if you've done something wrong, again. that three letter word ego you don't want to stop doing it because you've already invested your conviction your time your money in it and you don't want to be proven wrong now that's a terrible terrible thing to do when you are an investment planner not a financial planner investment planner okay because you are not uh, you're not uh, telling your people to rectify uh, some mistake which might have happened from your end Or if you are an investor, you are ready to rectify that investment mistake as well, and you carry it on. So you have the end result of it is you know portfolios which are ridden with such uh, stocks or uh, numerous uh, uh, mutual fund portfolios or uh, you know n number of insurance policies. And you know, pata hai, first years, but he doesn't want to rectify. So it's it's very similar to you know uh, when we say that why people finish movies which even by interval they have found out that they are wrong. You get it? Or if they find they finished meals that they know it is a bad meal, like in the restaurant, we have come. We have spent so much money. Family's mood is bad. So if food is bad, then let's finish it here. 
who wants to break the norm here? So this is the sunk cost fallacy. It's very, very psychological and uh, that has its repercussions a lot on what it is. So now the myths and beliefs, okay? Uh, let's get into this. This is very, very interesting and this applies to, so I've, I've selected some random samples, okay? Uh, these myths and beliefs, I think uh, you all will encounter as individuals, you all will encounter as the professionals, which are thing, and you will most of them relate to it. Okay. So, what is the first one? The investor versus trader mindset. Okay. So, here we've all seen that uh, you know the epic uh, cartoons in our childhood, and I still see them. There's the child in the Easter. I love seeing Tom and Jerry. So, every Tom thinks he's a smart investor. Or vice versa. So every smart investor thinks he's Tom, who desperately keeps chasing quick returns, which is nothing but Jerry. And those quick returns, if you see at the end of every Tom and Jerry cartoon, keeps evading that smart investor. Okay. So this is a mindset. And this is a myth. And why I'm saying a myth is that at the beginning, people have to understand that you might be lucky if you are a trader with a couple of your trades. But what works in the long run is an investment uh, philosophy. Second aspect to this thing is that many people start either as investors and turn traders immediately because they've chosen something which is very, very, you know, uh, 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 penny or petty and their conviction has already been uh, shaken up. So who started that? I'll hold this stock for five years. Once the stock doesn't perform in the next five days or five uh, weeks, immediately wants to sell and becomes a trader. And same applies for a trader. So if he's bought a wrong stock, if he's bought a you know, bad stock and stocks are bound to be volatile, that person, like what we said about the previous bias, the sunk cost fallacy, says that, oh, who wants to incur a loss? I've done this thing. Now let me turn into an investor. Now that, that Kachara stock, becomes a part of his portfolio and he starts calling himself an investor. Okay. The second one, risk versus return. So on one side is risk, on the other side is return. People don't understand that. Behavioral finance ka ek bahut important part you have to tell your people risk is always accompanied by return. So what they do is, I'm giving the example of a mutual fund. Expecting aggressive returns from debt funds and conservative returns from equity funds. So what you have here is basically people invest in debt funds and we have seen a big crash happening in last year uh, in a major fund house because somebody wanted aggressive returns. The fund manager wanted to deliver, the people wanted to have uh, aggressive returns and it felt like a pack of cards. Similarly, when equity funds promise you that you know there'll be conservative returns in that, and you go in for you know lots of conservative schemes in equity funds or uh, certain categories which are there, and they do not do what an equity fund is supposed to do. It is something like expect Samrat Anup Chalota to sing like Bacha, the rap or the, the uh, you know the icon rap icon and vice versa. So you are expecting Anup Jalota to sing like Bacha and do a rap, impossible. Or Bacha to slow down and sing like uh, Anup Jalota, impossible. So taper down your expectations or have realistic expectations. Okay. Oh, and the Dave girl. Okay. Asset allocation. Now you all are professionals, you all have understood what is asset allocation. What is the textbook definition of asset allocation? I don't want to get into that. I'm not giving a class right now on asset allocation, but the myth and belief. Now this guy from the, the image itself, Ajay Devgan is making a very spectacular risky entry. Okay. The way it is on the uh, photo. So conservative asset allocation as per certain get rich quick investors. So, when you tell a risky investor that bhaiya kuch asset allocation karo yaar, so you know what he does? He divides his money equally between cryptocurrency investments and day trading in penny stocks. Asman se gira khajur mein You understand? 
completely mindset is wrong. It's a myth. It's a wrong process. That is where I pulled about that one factor, if you all remember, ignorance. There is a high level of ignorance today prevailing among people. You all are the people who have to put common sense into them. Common sense, dene ka, gnyan dene ka hi pais hum lete hai. Fees lete hai. We have to do just keep on doing those simple things again and again and again. Let's not make life complicated. Cryptocurrency may con uska, you know, grandfather and con father and koini janta. It might be the most trending thing. I do not recommend it at all because I have no conviction in that product. I do not know what is the underlying security. I do not know if tomorrow my money is stuck home to contact. I'm just giving an example, nothing against a particular thing, but I would do all that due diligence, keep life simple. Okay, so this is that uh, concept. Now the beliefs, okay. Similarly, myth hote hai, to belief hoti hai, and the beliefs jo behavioral finance mein aaj hum baat kar rahe, we are talking about is the wrong beliefs, okay. Now the very risk parameters, as I told you, risk and return go hand in hand, okay. So what are the risk parameters? And this is from our day-to-day -day experiences. You all also must have experienced, you all are pretty experienced as well uh, in these things, that there are many youth who still believe that they are investing in fixed deposits. And senior citizens investing in equity. So conventionally, if we are taught by the textbook that youth should take more exposure to equity and vice versa for senior citizens, you have real life people coming and talking to you that I'm too scared of equity. A 25, 30 year old guy telling me, not all, because nowadays they are swept by that quick money you know, concept, stock markets are doing fabulously well, liquidity is uplush, Bitcoin is doing well, and every perceivable asset class is doing well. But there are people who are ignorant. Now here also it goes to, I told you about your family culture. That one point, if I told you, if you remember earlier, that a family says that fixed deposits is the thing to go to. Now that young guy has been brought about, brought up in that culture. So usko fixed deposits ke zyada kuch shushtai nahi. Similarly, senior citizens who are probably very, very well uh, versed with uh, you know everything who would normally like to take a conventional call, but then you will still find exceptions who will say that yeah, every way to ask rates for come and you know interest rates are four percent, five percent, and all. Can I invest in equity and let me take a, take a higher exposure? Asset allocation, again, I'm telling you, I'm not talking about asset allocation because as a part of asset allocation, yes, both of these form a part of a, a very normal uh, profile. But here there are people who are outrightly telling the others. Now, death by debt. Very, very interesting to speak, right? Death by debt. Now, death by debt, kya? It is borrowing money is the only solution for reaching your goals. So there are a huge number of people and that is where your banks, your you know institutions capitalize on just giving loans to people left, right, center. And these people have no hesitation. Yaar, kuch bhi karna hai, loan le lete hai. Gaadi leni hai, loan le lete hai. Vacation pe jana hai, loan le lete hai. Ghar lena hai, loan le lete hai. Business start karna hai, loan le lete hai. This is one person who tells everything. Prudence goes on the back bench. So that loans, People do not have an idea. You all are all aspiring CFP people. You all should know as per the you know, calculator when you take a loan, what is the actual amount principal plus the you know, loan amount, EMI amount, how much you end up paying. People do not do that. They spend 20 to 25 years of their life just repaying a loan. The cash flow gets affected. It goes for a toss. People have seen people paying 50 to 60 percent of their monthly salaries as PMIs. Criminal, it's absolutely bad for their profile. Neither can they, you know, have their normal expenses met. Investing to bahut ki baat hai. And they keep on happily taking loans. And the banks and the institutions are more than happy doing that. And then we have a category called good loans versus bad loans. So good loans is generally for buying your first house if you have the down payment well with all. First house only, not for investment. 
if you are sending your kid for higher education, if you have not planned for it, okay, good luck. I think everything else, people have a belief that taking a loan is a good thing. According to me, it's not. Okay. This is what I told you, family's financial culture, the same thing, how you're brought up. Okay. And it plays a big role in determining your financial profile. People do not want to get out of a certain mindset. The three-letter word comes again, ego. gold investment karna hai. So gold may he karunga, na equity, na FD, na real estate. Very, very, very sad state of affairs. But once a thing sticks in your mind and you don't, you know, be flexible, are not ready to listen to anything, it's really uh, hampering your uh, financial profile. And it's nothing but an investment product bias, as I told you. Now, another belief is that, you know, there's a question, if I would have loved to do this interaction, uh, Rajesh, you know, uh, in front of uh, these many people at a certain venue, because this is a question I pose to people. So do you know the difference between money or wealth? So when you say that, uh, you know, I earn a lot of money, or I have lots of money, or I have made a lot of money, nobody hardly, I would say, creates, uh, you know, uh, uses the word, you know, that I am creating wealth. I am a wealth creator. I have created tons of wealth. Money is used more. Okay. But there is a difference. Okay. So what is that basically difference? And I would request if you all find this, uh, you know, interesting, you can note it down, that money comes from your profession. Get it? But wealth comes from investments. There is a big difference. So the money which you save, and you say, I'm a great saver, that's just an emotion. Nothing, nothing, it doesn't add up to anything. But when you say that I make investments and I create wealth, that is through an action. So the difference between savings and uh, investing is one is emotion, one is action. Investments have to be prudent. Saving to koi bhi kar lega, like saving is obviously the, the prime thing. Nothing is like if you can't save, then the whole story is over. That is very, very important. Okay. Now, another thing which, uh, you know, as I told you, I picked up points and these are very startling points and you have to understand, this is a very important point. This is, uh, uh, I would say, the, a very fundamental uh, reason. Many people, you would have said in, in normal uh, conversation, they said, that market mein paise ka laga hai? Many people, as a part, they don't, min, uh, they don't uh, intend anything wrong, but there's a certain word. So when prospective clients ask me, market mein paise kaha lagane hai? I very nicely and humbly correct. I tell them. I concept is respect money. When you say jate hai means either you are gambling or doing some speculation or something. There's not a thought. Kisi ne bula mene laga hai. Nivesh mein aapki soch hai. Aapka paisa hai, aapka hard earned money. Okay, so respect that money, right? Now, what are the adverse effects? And, uh, you know, we've got many clients who are victims of this, uh, all these other factors and what we've said, and it's my constant endeavor being, uh, it's a role of a psychologist, you know, uh, a financial planner's role is more of a psychologist. We have to counsel them. But then you get people with first effects, and that is injurious to finances. So you see the doctor sahab on the right, which is what you are, basically. So many people then, because of these uh, habits, develop financial flu, okay, which is nothing but instability. Flu mein kya hota hai? You are neither completely down, nor you are completely active. You are instable. Your finances become instable. And you need to just retract all the points which I have said about the features, the aspects, the myths, the beliefs, mindset, five E5 universe. This is the outcome of that. Okay. 
it causes fear fear rises out of ignorance and the word in technical in medical terms for that is schizophrenia ignorance say in the sense you do not know how to approach equities you have a fear schizophrenia mein wahi hota hai it's a fear of the unknown everything around you feel that it's going to damage you why are you fearing it because you do not know it learn understand what is direct stock picking understand how are mutual funds working where do mutual funds invest there is a very i would like to make a point here it's useful for everyone i feel there is a certain you know phrase which all of you all must have encountered yaar tumhare mutual funds aajkal acha nahi kar yaar mutual funds so bahut sahi chal rahe the biggest mistake these people are telling and you are accepting is it's not mutual funds which are doing good or bad it's the underlying security which is doing good or bad so if today interest rates are low and your debt funds are giving good returns the short term debt funds it's because the interest rates are low that's why the debt funds are doing well mutual fund is just a pass through vehicle tomorrow the markets collapse and equity or mutual fund will come down the value is going to come down but it's equity which has come down your gold your real estate your debt is not come down so because people do not know people do not want to explore that thing again that is where your role is pronounced you have to make a mark that you are the one who is not an expert in everything but who knows something about everything that's what a cfp is for and he then applies his mindset to it we are like a family doctor we are not you know the that uh, medical specialist a family doctor ek nabs pakad ke family ki bol deta hai ki bacche ko bukhar hai ki wo ja ke fir bhi khel sakta hai ek ek crossing le lo aapko hospital mein jaane ki zarurat nahi that's what a family doctor does that's what a financial planner knows the inside out of a family of an individual then there is a misguided investor the blurred vision your people who you know first time entering into stock market penny stocks le lo aaj liya kal double bitcoin do din mein 500% profit put it in a bank uh, put it in a fixed deposit which will give you 10% when the rbi rates are 4% and 5% is your uh, you know government securities which instrument on planet earth will give you are uh, 10% secure people do not understand it's misguided again ignorance so that person is nothing but a blurred vision dhundla dhundla dikhta hai usko sab fractured investment style again bias those five six biases which i told you fractured thoda toota hua wapas jud gaya thoda toota hua wapas jud gaya which means aaj equity kal debt kal gold जो फ्लेवर ऑफ द सीजन है वो पकड़ के चल दी नो गोल सेटिंग नो टैगिंग ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट्स, नो टाइम फ्रेम फ्रैक्चर्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट स्टाइल आज पैसा उठा के चलो किसी ने मेरे चाचा ने बोल दिया रियल एस्टेट अच्छा है इक्विटी से निकाल के रियल एस्टेट में डाल दिया रियल एस्टेट बुरा है पूरा निकाल के मैंने आज एफ में डाल दिया दिस इज द लूज इमोशन तो आपका जब पेट गड़बड़ होता है तो क्या होता है डिहाइड्रेट हो जाता है आपको लूज मोशन हो जाते हैं विच इज नथिंग बट बिकॉज ऑफ ऑल दीज फैक्टर्स योर नेट वर्थ योर असेट्स कीप ऑन गोइंग डाउन दे कीप ऑन डिहाइड्रेटिंग यू गैर इट सो दीज आर इंजूरियस टू योर फाइनेंस नाउ आई हैव कवर्ड ऑल दोज नाउ लेट मी लेट मी जस्ट टेक द ऑपरचुनिटी टू जस्ट शेयर माई बिलीफ एंड वैल्यूज अबाउट दिस एंटायर थिंग being given the opportunity the first and foremost rule which i apply to myself and my practice is that the lesser i understand complex financial products far better and stronger i get in explaining simple financial products to my clients what is the meaning of this today there are so many complex products which are being launched by every you know amc mutual funds or Uh, you know your insurance is coming out with something or the other your bitcoin is something 
real estate comes out with X, Y, Z product, some schemes they come out with, lot many, lot many things. Insurance is a full ocean of complex financial products. Okay. I try to understand it for half an hour. If it's a new product, if I do not understand it in half an hour, I drop that product completely. I'm talking about new product. Okay. Because if I, as a financial professional, after 15 years of experience, cannot understand it in half an hour, how the hell is a layman investor or a normal person going to understand it from me even in the next three days or for the rest of his life? And why should I look at complex financial products when the fundamentals are so clear for me? So where it is minimal risk, it is debt. Where it is short-term goal, it is debt fixed income, where it is long term, where it is uh, you know high growth, it is equity, where it is three to six months of uh, keeping my expenses aside, it's a contingency fund, if it's a hedge against my portfolio, it's gold, and if, if it is insurance, I only need a term plan, maximum amount, minimum premium, a very adequate health insurance, some decent fixed income, government saving schemes, Keep it simple, guys. Okay. And then I strengthen myself on explaining these simple products to my clients for which they is beneficial. Okay. Now, this is one important thing is I had already mentioned uh, one aspect to you of understanding the underlying security. A very important one. Okay. Where does this product invest ultimately? So, if today somebody tells you that on a fixed uh, you know, income product, I'm able to deliver 13, 14%. Kala hai. Or there is a high element of risk in that product. It's not only fixed income. Because if fixed income, as I told you, is moving at around anything between 3% to 7% range, how the hell can you give me uh, another 4 5% without taking a risk? And if you're taking that risk, you're not telling me, which means it's not the right projection. Get it? So understand the underlying security. And before you invest in any product, look out for this option. Exit door kaha hai? What are the clauses of going out of a product? Because today, entry is always easy. Exit is difficult. So any product, if you are recommending ongoing product, good product, read the exit option and explain that to your client. So as a matter of fact, as a mutual fund distributor till now, okay, at times, whenever I advise on mutual funds, onboarding a mutual fund investor, getting his business is second priority for me. Now you'll ask me why. Because the first priority is if he's onboarded, and he's my client, my priority at any point of time would be that if and when he asks for a redemption, I will put that on priority. Because that is what will build up your confidence, your client's confidence with you. Time. And when the market goes up or whatever happens, believe me, nobody thanks you. It's a thankless job. But when late, he'll sit on your head. So any product, look out for the option of exit. What is the exit clause? How many years? Lock-in hai, nahi hai. Kaan se redemption milega? Whatever it is. Okay. Now, the values which I perceive, okay, is be very consistent in your path, friends. Be very, very consistent, okay. Whatever you have set out for achieving your goal or your client's goal, keep pegging at it. Do not lose focus. Okay. And if you are a financial planner, goal planning, say, buddy cheese for you. Because once you put goals with your investments, believe me, the client is rooted. He is going to see that his goal is accomplished. So today, if the markets crashed in March last by 40%, and if some investors had you know, signed up with me, some clients, 
in January of 20. And they had said that, uh, you know, my goal is next 15 years, I want to build up for my retirement or my child's higher education. And in three months, he saw his 100 rupee becoming 60. I had to just tell him, Aapko rupee ke bahar nikalna hai, ki saal rukna hai. Simple answer. Because his goal was something, he was focusing on his goal. He did not come out. Now, I'm not a magician that I knew something was going to happen in the next one year. Nobody on planet Earth knew where the markets would be in next one year. But that's what the market has done. But I just took, stuck to board planning. And many of uh, ethical financial planners have done that. They have just handheld their customers. Ki aapka goal hai to hilo mat. But if goal had been approaching early, then we would have to be there the six months before that. Okay. So be consistent in your part. Now, relish and celebrate is a very important goal, you know, a very important value. Now, why I say relish and celebrate? It's a, it's a very important thing that uh, you set goals which can be relished and celebrated with the loved ones when you achieve them. Yaar, itna mehnat kiya hai, itna advisory ka paisa diya hai, to jab goal aya, to usko yaar, acknowledge it. You know, feel good about it. These these values you will find in my book, Yours Financially, whoever has read it, I've, I've tried to emphasize in a story form. Okay. What's the point when you achieve a goal or something? Aya, chalo, kia, bahut hi gaya. In the 20 years of your mehnat, your effort, your focus, your discipline, maza nahi aata hai. Be, be full of life when you celebrate it, you know, when you've achieved something. And express gratitude. I think this word gratitude uh, has been the, the foremost word in my life. For every breath you take, everything which you do, every you know progress which you make, just express gratitude. Be thankful to the Almighty and the universe for achieving whatever you have achieved and move on in life. Okay, this is not a motivational speech, but these are related to uh, you know imbibing these values. You can use these words as a part of your pitch to your clients. They will appreciate your thought process, but don't do it in a fake manner. If you believe in it, to he karna, nahi karte, to, to each his own. I'm not saying this is Guru Mantra. Okay. And don't leave your loved ones behind in the pursuit of achieving your financial goals that you find yourself alone when the goals are set up. For whatever reason. Destiny has its own uh, you know, path, own course. But my point here is uh, it's a simple thing that uh, whomever you all have uh, you know, taken along in your journey of life, ensure that these people are there to celebrate, to you know, uh, be a part of the success when the goal has been achieved. Many people, you know, uh, these are the concluding remarks of my presentation, uh, would uh, relate money and happiness. Yeah, paisa to hai, lekin push nahi hu, push hu, lekin paisa nahi hai. And vice versa, all of us, including me, all of us. Nobody has achieved that thing. But we try to make an effort. And that is what I've tried to make. Okay. So the pursuit of money is never ending. Ye kabhi khatam hi hoti. Kisi ke liye. Jo sansar mein hai, uske liye, this is never ending. And it's a boon for us also because we are in that practice. So we are, we are active because it's never ending. Okay. Then find your epicenter of happiness because again, markets and uh, goals and you know external factors, uh, those are going to be there. What I'm trying to just put a point across again in yours financially, my book, this point was highly appreciated and it's a very important point uh, here. Is it could be something which gives you inner sukoon for which you really don't need tons of money. Okay, so you don't need uh, to find your epicenter of happiness to find that. So what is that? So anything that soothes and elates you is happiness. It could be your happy, uh, hobby, your passion, your piece of music, close friend, family member, or a place you like. In sab cheezo mein aapko bada bada corpus ya amount nahi chahiye. These are the things which are going to stay with you regardless of whether you achieve your financial goal or no. In your uh, you know, orbit of happiness, these things are always going to be there. So today on my you know music list or my playlist, a Kumar Shanu or a Kishore Kumar song is always there. If the markets are at 60,000 or if the markets are at 30,000, it's always there. It gives me happiness. You get it. So do that. Try to explore that there is life beyond uh, 
only, only, only creating wealth because these are ultimately fulfillment of so what is financial well-being. This is just a small definition. I have tried to make it. I'm again saying I'm no guru or a great uh, you know uh, philosopher as well. So this is from my book, a process in which you have accepted your financial mistakes, are now constantly financially aware of your present scenario, and have taken the right financial actions to fulfill your goals. What does this mean? And why have I highlighted these three words, which is acceptance, awareness, and actions? Because many people are having that ego. They do not accept the facts that they have made financial mistakes. That stops them from being progressive, moving ahead. Now, as you've accepted, now you are financially aware of where you are. You might be in a good spot, bad spot, but again, you are aware of it. You are not living in a bubble or a balloon, okay, or an illusion. And second is, abhi ye sab ho gaya, accept kar liya, aware kar liya, what are the right financial actions you take? That is where you are in a state of financial well-being. Because it is going to be never-ending. That's what I just said. So it's always have an internal financial manifest. Here my internal financial calculation is put on the wall of my heart and I'm going to follow it. And financial nirvana. It's a very big word, but uh, I tried to put it in a little bit of poet, poetic fashion. It is the feeling you could experience once you have unfurled the number of layers of expectations you have created for yourself in your life in the sense that once you start fulfilling your expectations of your life, you will be more happier. But the more the layers created, the longer you take to unfurl them and delay on them. So the more you know, uh, you've created targets and more you've created goals, nothing wrong in that. But then your financial nirvana again because it's going to happen very, very slowly. Okay. Again, this is just a thought by me. I do not want to debate on it. Everybody has their own, uh, you know, uh, thought processes about it. My simple thing is keep life simple, live and, uh, you know, invest well. But only point here is, sorry, only point here is that uh, do not uh, forsake your uh, happiness in this particular journey. So uh, the financial nirvana aspect which I mentioned here is just to sum up the entire thing that uh, live life in your means, do not be dependent, but financial cushion is very necessary. It is not that you are uh, using the word nirvana and telling anybody to go to the hills. The real challenge is living a life. But living it with a financial cushion, an emotional, you know, uh, bent, and a spiritual, you know, type of a mindset, and living life to the fullest, being ethical is what I would suggest. So, thank you, friends. This brings me to the end of the presentation. And uh, I now uh, thank you for your time and attention. If there are any questions, I route it through uh, Rajesh. These are my contact details. Uh, I'm available on social media. This is my email ID or my website if anybody would like to. Sir. I'm stopping my screen sharing, Rajesh. Thank you so much, Kalpesh. Bhai.